All right, here we are. I'm back again to do more Falcon videos. Well, this Falcon video. Um, I'm gonna be, try and be quick this time, just do a quick sound. Um, so let's go. I'm, I'm gonna start with a wavetable uh, because I discovered something recently which I think is pretty cool. Um, you can, I don't know why I didn't know this, but you can add your own wavetables to the wavetable oscillator in Falcon. Um, I have a sample pack folder of mine. I recently downloaded some free wavetables. Um, you can just find them online. Uh, maybe I'll try and link to the uh, in the description of the video. Um, but I've got these various folders. Uh, let's just have a listen to some, shall we? Uh, let's go with chill. What have we got? So that doesn't sound how it's gonna sound. That's just like a WAV file. But if we drag it in, we get a wavetable. Um, you, you can you can actually just drag on. Uh, I assume you can do it on Windows as well. Um, on Mac, you can just drag from the Finder straight into the here, but. Because I'm streaming on OBS, I'm doing it from Falcon's own browser. Um, now, with the wavetable oscillator, I feel like it's always extremely uh, tempting just to make a really evolving pad sound, <clears throat> um, which I love to do. It's one of my favorite kinds of sounds to make. Uh, however, I figured maybe I should do something a little bit more like lo-fi kind of poly, like keys sound instead. Uh, and any of these sounds, any of these wavetables would do, I think. Let's try a few more. Quite like the cloudy one. Uh, what's this one like? Let's try a few more. They're quite like piercing when you just hear them on their own. All right, this one's cool because it's got a really nice, smooth gradient. Um, so it might be cool for what I want to do because I want to attach a bunch of modulation to the attack of the keys to get a sort of, you know, nice key sound. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is modulate the wave index with a simple attack decay. Um, excuse my bad playing. Oh yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I want it to be. Kind of a bit of a clav sort of sound. Uh, but I also want to modulate the pitch um, with another attack decay. And this one I'll make have a shorter decay. Uh, maybe not. So that's cool. Um, and there's a lot more things to do here. Um, it's always very tempting to unison these voices too. Before we get to that though, let's try some phase distortion. I really like that. So instead of mapping that to the attack, Maybe I'll map a little bit, a little bit of it to the attack with the same attack decay as the 
first. No, I'll do a different one. Uh, here we go. Tactic A. But this time, I want it to be less intense. And I want it to start. Yeah, it's starting from about the middle. But I also want to modulate this with a random. What do we got? That's key group. Smooth random. That's what I'm after. My favorite. Uh, so you got a rate control and the, the depth is usually very way too high. So I usually like to turn on random start so it doesn't just start in the same place every time. And no retrigger as well, so it doesn't just start in the random place, the same place every time. And as you can see, it's doing its job. So I reckon let's bring in one voice of unison, let's bring up the detune and the stereo spread and the wave spread. Now, at this point, I'm wondering if maybe I've picked the wrong wavetable. Uh, the cool thing is, is I can just bring in another wavetable and see how it sounds with these settings. I think I like that better. But I think that the uh, attack decay on the pitch is too intense. is effectively just like a really cheesy 80s horn sound. Um, not sure if that's what I want. <laughs> it's pretty good though. Um, but I'll leave that for now. Maybe we can come back to that later because I want to modulate the pitch in a lot of other ways as well. <clears throat> and I also will probably layer this sound with another sound. We, we, we've only just begun, you know. <clears throat> So let's, uh, we can't modulate these little knobs, just by the way, you can only nod, nod, nod. <laughs> you can only modulate this pitch knob, which makes sense because you don't need to have multiple gran like levels of pitch granularity with modulation because you can just do that when I select a modulator. So I think it would be good to have an LFO, uh, to modulate the pitch. However, I also think it would be good to have a smooth random on a very, very low setting uh, to to sort of give the LFO a bit of variation. Um, there's also this other setting called drunk, which is a bit like smooth random, but it, it like smooth random is a relatively recent addition to Falcon. Falcon uh, drunk's been around for a while. I don't think it's as good, but it's kind of essentially the same sort of vibe, but I'm just gonna get rid of it. Um, and we'll go with smooth random. I just feel like you get more predictable results. Uh, maybe I'll explore drunk in another sound later. Uh... I also think 
it would be cool is if after the attack decay has finished its cycle on the wave index, that maybe we get more modulation after that. And I could do that with like maybe one envelope, but I think it would be better to just add a new modulation amount or, or um, controller, uh, which comes in later. So I'm gonna do that with this envelope. Uh, where are we here? <clears throat> So this way I can delay it significantly and have a big attack on it. Let's do some stuff like this. Maybe hold that. Let's see how we go with this. That needs to be delayed way more. cool um one other thing which is a hallmark of a keyboard sound is not having it sustain um otherwise we've effectively just got a pad sound or an organ sound um so i might turn that down can uh, do some more fun things here. I don't love the pitch decay here still. Um, attack uh, does kind of add a nice punch to it. It's a bit percussive now. I don't know if I love it though. Maybe if we just turn it off for now and see how we go. Because the wavetable itself adds uh, a little bit of that already. So maybe we're just sort of doubling up. Now the issue here now, if you can call it an issue, is that because I had this long modulation and now I've just removed the sustain, I feel like it's missing something. So So, we haven't even got to filters yet, and I think we need to get to filters. And I guess what I'm wondering is, does this need a phaser? But that might be overdoing it. One thing that I think it could use is a formant crusher. Um, Thank uh -huh. 
can select different vowels. Just kind of a, a bit silly, really. But I think if we add a bit of modulation to this, um, why don't we try a drunk? The other thing I'm going to do is turn, I'm going to turn the mix down considerably. And we'll modulate, sort of set it at about 50 and modulate it with an LFO, I think. I also think that um, I often just turn off retrigger, by the way, just because I feel like it adds, I mean, it does add more variation. It means that the LFO doesn't restart its cycle every time you hit a key. Um, I'm also going to modulate the frequency of this, but very subtly with another LFO. I think what I'm going to do is add a envelope to the mix so it comes in slowly um, and maybe I'll do hmm let's try another one of these a lot of attack a lot of decay sustain kind of low maybe we can do a bit of delay on it we need to bring this down so it's off. That's cool. I think it's coming in too much though, so I'm going to bring down the intensity of the modulation. Pretty cool. Um, maybe a bit more bite. I also wonder if we can change these to... Of it. I think I think I prefer that. It'd be cool if you could modulate these. Um, I guess I guess you could by having multiple format crushes and bring them in and out. That might actually be fun, like a sort of wave sequencing them in and out. That's a interesting patch idea for another time, not for now. Um, so we've got that going. I think it'd be cool to have another filter. Uh, and this time we could go with like an analog filter, which I believe the Falcon analog filter is sort of based off the Prophet 5 filter. I mean, loosely, the Curtis um, filter. Um, it might be interesting to try uh, a v VCF20, which is an MS20 filter. Um, I often like to go with this dual one because you get two in one. Um, 
So I think it, some complex modulations over these filters would be really cool. So I think different envelopes for each, the high pass and the low pass, and coming in at different times would be pretty cool. So another one of these but let's delay it pretty significantly and the attack decay maybe we can just get rid of the really the sustain altogether a bit of this let's get the delay higher that but it's too intense so let's bring that down so that's all great um i think this morph I'll edit the modulation. I think it needs to be slower. So and less intense. Maybe delayed a bit. Remember the filter, uh, sorry, the LFO frequency is being modulated by another LFO. You've got this depth knob to, you know, decrease, increase the depth of the modulation, but you've also got, you've got like two depth knobs effectively. So I could reduce the depth pretty significantly again. Make it very subtle. So I just want gentle movement. So that's cool. I like the way that sounds. And if we check out this mix real quick, I feel like the delay, uh, a decay, I should say, on that envelope could be less. Yes, that's. Let's, let's do a bit of that, actually. Maybe a bit of this. Yeah. And you know, what this really reminds me of is I used to have an N-Sonic VFX SD and an N-Sonic TS-12 which I do have videos about on my channel, which are actually quite some of my most popular videos. I unfortunately don't have those since anymore. Um, I sold them because uh, I just didn't have much space anymore. And they, they were huge keyboards, very heavy. Um, beautiful synths though. And they were wavetable synths, or they were transwave synths, which is just Ensonic's vermin clature. Um, for, sorry, verminclature? What the fuck is that? Nomenclature. I like verminclature though. That's an interesting, uh, let's, we can use that at some point. Anyway, that's their own nomenclature for um, wavetables. So I like this sound because it reminds me of the sounds I used to make on those synths. Granted, I don't think I was as good at sound design then, but the, I love wavetable synthesis in general, but I, I liked the way they implemented it on those synths. It was a lot of modulation options. You had three envelopes. You had, I think, 
maybe it was just one LFO, but you then had this mod matrix, which you could like smash modulation signals together in various interesting ways. So this is cool. There's no effects on this, there's nothing. This is just all we've got so far. I think it sounds pretty great. Um, so we can, we can just do more, of course, as always. Um, but I think for the moment, let's, let's try adding a reverb because who doesn't love a reverb? Um, should we try a shimmer? Maybe. I like that, but the mix should not be all the way. Sounding cool, no? Um, so, I think what we need to do um, is go over here to the side to our list and I want to duplicate my layer because I want to experiment real quick uh, with this second layer. I want to see if I can, I, well, I know I can, I want to reverse the wave index envelope direction. So if I bring up the wave index, all the way up and then it's modulator which is down here i believe i'm going to reverse it completely and i'm going to extend the decay time on it which is that's a cool effect um already um but what I also think might be cool is if I change the wavetable to something else. So let's just see what we get. It's pretty immediately awesome. <laughs> I mean, this is the cool thing about a software package uh, like Falcon is that you know, you start out with one thing, you would set up all of these modulations and then you can very just quickly, very, very quickly just change the oscillator or something and get something 
pretty different. And I like that, but what if we had both of them? CPUs maxing out a little bit there. <laughs> um, that's okay. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I guess there's just like a lot happening. Um, so what do we got here? It's probably this. It's probably what could it be? I guess look, Falcon is can be a heavy instrument. I'm a bit confused about that. But either way. You can see down in the corner here how much CPU it's using, and it's a lot. And it's, if I click just a three note chord. A three note chord is using 20 voices, which is pretty insane. I guess I've got two voices per oscillator detuned. Uh, so it's four voices. Where are the other voices coming from? I am confused. I, there's a lot of modulation going on. That's probably something to do with it. Anyway, I think that's like just a gorgeous sound. Uh, I'm really happy with that. Actually, it's one of the nicest sounds I think I've made in a long time. The only thing is, is that with this first layer, I remember I had this second part of the modulation in the wave index. Um, now, because I've reversed the attack decay, the modulation, the extra modulation on that wave index is, needs to be reversed as well. So let's just flick that across. Um, I kind of don't want to change anything else. I also think if I do, my computer will die. Um, so maybe I'll just leave it at that. Maybe I'll just leave it at that. Um, and I think I'll just stop this one and I'll go on to making another sound right away because I'm feeling inspired. Um... <laughs> Reverb is pretty intense. Let's just get rid of it for a sec. So the other thing that's happening is that this is a very loud sound now that I've got both the oscillators. So uh, both the layers. So if I, let's just, I just minus three dB on each one, maybe. Perhaps more. Minus five. I guess the other reason why the CPU is being taxed is because I've got quite a lot of release. Um, that just builds up sound, uh, sorry, voices over time. I still think it's pretty weird that when I just do a three note chord, oh no, six voices. I guess I had to wait for the release to completely die away previously. Six voices at a time. That's not so bad. Um, this reverb is nice, but it's a lot. That's huge. Maybe I can... I'll just turn the decay down. Yeah, it's a bit better. It's more manageable. So... 
let's just let's just save this. Uh, save program. I never know what to call these. Uh, lush lo-fi evolve. <laughs> I feel like I have a lot of, uh, you know, self-made presets and searching through them is just a total bummer. I usually just make patches for tracks when I'm in the track making process and then I save them and then occasionally I reuse them, but often I don't. Maybe I should turn the release down just a touch. Maybe on this second layer. All right, just one more thing. I want to see what happens if I add an analog chorus. Let's just put that before the reverb. Actually, let's just chuck it on this one layer. Maybe the first layer. Now I'm just fucking around. I, I should just stop. I should just stop. something nice. I still don't love that reverb. That's not the worst. I also think there's like this, again, there's other places you could take this, like... I don't know, so many different things you could do with this sound. For now, I'm just going to save it, leave it at that, <clears throat> and uh, leave this video. And yeah, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.